What's up guys, let's show you how to use anamorphic flare for Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects. Very simple way to procedurally add well, um, the very uh, popular anamorphic flare digitally. So um, inside Premiere, you are going to want to come over to presets in your effects panel and right click hit import presets. Find your download folder, open up Premiere and double click the .prfp set file. I've already done that, so all I have to do is search for it. There we have it. So the way this works, you have to duplicate your footage on top of itself. So click, hold, and hit option or alt, and just come above your footage and drop. Now you can apply the preset and you're going to get this crazy stuff. We fix that by coming over to your effect controls panel under opacity, blend mode. You can hit add, or linear dodge add, or you can hit screen if this hot stuff over here is too much. Up to you, really. Now we've got a few parameters in here. Unfortunately, Premiere doesn't allow us to hide stuff we don't need. There's just some limitations right now on how that works. So there's a lot of stuff in here that you really, do, like I said, you do not need. I want you to focus on the white input level and the white output level. If you want to fool around with this stuff, go, go right on ahead. But this is what I have found to be the most important. So white input level is really going to be your tolerance. So when you decrease this, it's going to affect more of the footage. When you increase it, it's going to really hone in on the brightest spots in your shot. White output level is really just the brightness of the flare. So you've set your tolerance, and with this parameter here, you are just modifying the brightness. So let's leave that there, and then we come over to directional blur, and this blur length parameter is just the width of your flare. So if you want to bring that down, or you want to keep it up, you're welcome to. Lastly, tint, all we care about here is map white to, because that's the color that changes the flare. If you wanted to do something crazy, go right on ahead. Uh, <laughs> or if you just wanted to do white, you can do that as well. Um, so, the best part about using this uh, effect in Premiere is how fast it is. Just this is this is previewing at full resolution. I've just hit spacebar here, and you can see just immediate flares everywhere. That's pretty nuts. Um, it's just lightning, lightning fast. So if you can deal with sort of having to navigate around these parameters, you know this is a phenomenal option for you using this effect inside Premiere. Now in After Effects, we are able to hide that stuff, and we are able to make it much, a little bit more user friendly. However, it's just a little slower. So as you can see, um, I've got a sample piece of footage in here. I'm just gonna lower this resolution down to a third. I'm gonna hit spacebar, and it is gonna preview for me. Um, it's just not as fast as Premiere. Let's show you how this works. I'm gonna import a piece of footage right now. Um, I've got all uh, 16 by 9, 1 by 1, 9 by 16, and custom size compositions for you guys. Custom size, you come in here, hit Command or Control K, um, and make this whatever you want. You know, in case you're working on some crazy you know, aspect ratio. Otherwise, you've got all the familiar ones here. You know, 1 by 1 would be square for Instagram. 9 by 16 is vertical on your phone for like a story or something. Um, let's click 4K. We're going to come in here to the replace footage pre-comp. We are going to drop a new piece of footage in there and repo it. And as you can see, it just immediately applies that flare. Um, let's hit spacebar to render, or RAM preview rather. And the first thing you'll notice, it's a little bit slower. And that's for a number of reasons. But again, you're, you're in here if you're more comfortable with After Effects or you're in here because you like how uh, the script our parameters are for you guys. So this is at a third resolution. There you have it. It took you know a few moments there. You can still get a good idea of what it's going to look like. Um, no problem, really. And this particular shot looks sick, I might add. So come over to Effect Controls, click your Adjust Controls layer, and here you have all the same stuff from Premiere just spelled out for you. So Tolerance, when you lower that, it's going to affect more of the shot. You know, it's going to blow it out for you. Could be cool. Or if you want to really hone in on those headlights, you can drag it the other way. Let's find somewhere in the middle, like right here, like that. 
Uh, and then brightness again, just self-explanatory. Tint color, whoa, keep it at white. Lots of options here, Do whatever you want, my friends. Sick. Um, tint intensity is just gonna, that's gonna blend the color, whatever color you selected with, white and then flare size. Exactly what you think it would be. You know, it's gonna shrink horizontally. Um, these, th this range is very large, so you can hold shift as you drag left and right, and that'll make things quicker for you. Um, and just lastly, again, we'll ramp preview it. I press space bar. This is at one third resolution, so I can see it a little quicker. Not too slow, but definitely slower, and it'll play back. So in After Effects, if you're not familiar, um, chances are you are if you're watching this, but Command or Control M sends this to your render queue. You're going to want it to be a ProRes 422. Um, you can do that by coming into Format Options and, and selecting it. Um, that's so you can then bring it into Premiere or any other editing software without any compression, and then you know, you're not going to lose any, any sort of resolution or, or color shifts. Um, spit that out somewhere on your machine bring it into Premiere and you are good to go um, or any like I said any editing software so that is Animorphic Flare from Premiere and After Effects have fun uh, make some cool stuff and uh, yeah appreciate the support good luck guys